All right, Olga Kane out here at the YouTube <laughs> space in beautiful Playa del Rey, the most beautiful del Rey. Oh, not counting Lana del Rey. Yeah, Don't no, tell her. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. That was me speaking Russian. Tonight is International oh. Comedy Night, presented by Comedy Gives Back. You're going to see, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're Live. going to see some of the best international stand-ups from all over United States. Oh my gosh, man. There is so much stuff going on this whole week. People are like ready to bust down the doors to get involved. Yeah, I'm actually scared, all right? Yeah. Because I called my mother back in Russia just, um, you know, to be on the safe side. Oh. I'm just kidding. My mom doesn't have a phone. <laughs> It's, it's an international joke. Yeah. Um, that's not all. Don't forget to check out all of the live events at youtube.com slash comedy week. I mean, it's all so funny. I'm I'm scared of it. We're yeah, very it, scared. It's terrible, hilarious, and uh, lots of frightening stuff. Right. Also, last night's comedy show, it's been uploaded and can be streamed on the Comedy Week page, so check that out. Yeah, please. And hey, don't forget that every day we have multiple Comedy Week videos being posted, so go check out videos from Improv Everywhere, Rhett and Link, I'm in it, and the new video from Tim and Eric Goatee, which also can be seen on youtube.com slash comedy week. Oh my god, we have to get out of here and let this show happen. Yeah, you're right. I'm gonna go first, all right? Yeah, okay. Oh, she's, she's showing off. I can do that, too. We're gonna be right back tomorrow, but right now it's time for our international stand-up show! Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome to Comedy Week on YouTube. How is everybody here in the house tonight? Welcome wherever you are watching around the world. Thank you for pausing whatever hilarious sigh video clip you had to put aside to be here tonight. Thank you. We are live, so everybody in the audience, please watch yourselves. I know it's when it's live, you go, they can't stop me. You just want to yell titties or something, but rein it in, grow up. I know it's YouTube, this is where we all first saw the two girls in the one cup, but at the same time, there's a lot of innocent, overweight Japanese cats just trying to jump in and out their boxes in peace, have some dignity. Uh, I am your host for this evening, wherever you are watching this. Uh, that's great. Thank you, thank you, thank you for pretending to know who I am. That's very, yes, your laughter gives you away. Um, my name is Rove McManus. Uh, I am an Australian uh, comedian and talk show host. This is very exciting for me to be here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, yes, Rove, I realise it's a bit of a weird name. Um, at least I thought so till I moved here to Los Angeles. Did, did you know there's a person who lives in this city called Zooey Deschanel? Like, that's a, that's a name of a person. Like, I'm like, who are we with the what now? That can't be a real thing, surely. But uh, what I've also discovered is that uh, in this city especially, celebrities love a crazy name. I fit right in here. Because uh, normally what happens is the celebrities, they'll, they'll pair up to get themselves like a really cool celebrity fun nickname. You know, like uh, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, a uh, uh, Brangelina, uh, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner, a uh, uh, Benifer, and Keith Urban and Nicole Kidman, a uh, Keyhole, I think. <laughs> Isn't, can we, just might have to research that, just, okay, cool. I'm, yep, I'm being told I don't have any of these, good. Um, <laughs> But it's, it's now even gone even further where I don't know if you've noticed, but the celebrities are so bang up for a crazy name, they're giving all their kids crazy names. Yeah, yes, says the audience, I've noticed too. <laughs> yeah, observant. Because um, that's how you all talk to me. You suddenly become very well-spoken British. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm a YouTube audience member. Uh, I, I cannot be trusted with a real candle, however, but still. <laughs> Ah, ah. But yeah, crazy baby names like uh, Beyonce might be having another one. Blue Ivy was her first. That was great. Uh, other great names out there. Thank you, celebrities. Apple, Shiloh, Suri, Banjo, Moon Unit. That's a name. Uh, my favourite, though, I think would be uh, Nicolas Cage, actor Nicolas Cage. 
uh, as as opposed to the mechanic Nicolas Cage. Uh, I don't know why I needed to bring that up, but there you go. Uh, but Nicolas Cage named his son Cal L. K A L hyphen E L. Does anybody in the room tonight uh, know the significance of that name? Oh yes, yell it out. Oh, what? Whoa, yell out. What is it? Superman. Yes, yes. Be proud, nerd. It's Superman. <laughs> yell it out, my friend. Sure. I mean, you may as well yell it out because if you know this, you are not getting laid tonight. So be be proud. Get it out there. For those of you who don't know, and you probably will in the next couple of months with the movie coming, Cal L is Superman's birth name from his home planet of Krypton. <gasps> well done, Nicolas Cage! <laughs> You've just come up with the perfect way to make sure that your son comes home from school with his underpants on the outside as well. <laughs> Genius! Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have plenty of fantastic acts uh, coming up tonight. Uh, you have logged on to a wonderful show, Comedy Week, here on YouTube, International Night. One more round of applause as we get into it. Our first performer tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Kino. Oh, thank you. Give it go for Rove one more time. Your host. Thank you. It's good to be back in America. I just got back from Canada. Funny already, all right. I was in Winnipeg, Canada. When I was there, somebody goes, are you nervous to be here? It's the murder capital of Canada. Murder capital of Canada. I got all scared, I Googled it. 35 people a year. That is adorable. I live in Los Angeles, 35 people got killed in my apartment building last year. <laughs> we didn't even call the cops. So I kept reading, they don't kill each other as much as we do in Canada. Only 500 people get murdered in Canada a year. America, 20,000. We're number one, yay! Pew, 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 pew. So they got us beat there, but here's something odd, and this is true, their suicide rate in Canada is four times their murder rate. 2,000 people kill themselves every year. That's weird, right? How does that even work? Somebody breaks into your house in the middle of the night, you're like, oh my God, are you thinking about killing me? Me too, me too. What a coinkadink. Don't even waste your bullets. I already got the sleeping pills. Well, it's either that, or they have the dumbest cops in the world in Canada. They think everything's a fucking suicide. They show up at a crime scene, get off their horses or whatever they do, I don't know. <laughs> hey, what happened here? Oh my God, this is the worst suicide I've ever seen. <laughs> this guy must have been so sad. He broke into his own house, tied himself to this chair and then shot himself in the back of the head five times. <laughs> Some people just don't want to live, I guess, eh? Let's go get some free health care. More for the rest of us. I was just in show. It's a weird laugh. I was, uh, I was reading an article today about China. Do you guys know this? China has the fastest growing number of millionaires in the world. Do you know that? Yeah. It's got to be bittersweet for them. No one in China can pronounce the word millionaire. There's a lot of L's and R's. That's all I'm saying. Relax, I've done that joke in China, they hate it there too. <laughs> Your instincts are in the right place. But that's true, Time Magazine said they spend so much time and money in America that the entire mail order bright trend is now reversing. Because it used to be American guys would go to China, get a wife, then bring her back to America. Now Chinese millionaires are coming over here to pick up our sluts. <laughs> that's messed up, those are our sluts. We can't even hide these girls from the Chinese millionaires, right? They all have Chinese shit tattooed right above their asses. <laughs> if you have one here, relax. I'm sure you're not a slut. I'm sure you're into strength and courage. <laughs> I did that joke one time. A girl came up to me after the show. She goes, you're an asshole. I'm spiritual. <laughs> yeah, you sound like it. That's a whole lot of enlightenment coming out of your mouth right there. Just because you put a Chinese symbol above your ass crack doesn't bring you closer to Buddha, okay? 
brings you closer to my hotel room. There's nothing spiritual about that experience. It's more of a Catholic thing, really. People get touchy about Catholics. Don't worry, Catholics get touchy too. It's all good. I knew that Catholics were up to no good, right? They have a room in the church called the rectory. What did you think was going to happen to you? I'm never following a horny old guy into a rectory. Can we just stay here in the hinjobbery? Until my parents pick me up. Then I can go to the shrinkery, pretend this shit never happened. Tell you a little bit about myself. I was, I, uh, I was born in Russia. A lot of people don't believe me when I say that because I don't sound like a James Bond villain. I did my best to lose the accent because girls say they like accents, not the Russian one. That is not a sexy accent. You never see like a Russian lover in a movie. Hello, how are you? You're a pretty female person. Would you like to drink vodka and then complete me? But that's true. I was born in Russia in a small town uh, right outside of Chernobyl. People find that out. They always go, Daniel, growing up near Chernobyl, did that affect you in any way? And it did. I have a giant penis. Unfortunately, it's right above my tiny vagina. That's a radiation joke. That's not a dick joke. Google Chernobyl. It'll be funnier. I Google everything now. Google's amazing. It's unnecessary for you to learn how to spell the word unnecessary. You can throw a U, two N's, and a C into Google. It goes, did you mean unnecessary? Yes, I did. Thank you. Let's move this along. I don't know, I don't know how people did anything before the internet. They went to the moon before the internet. How did they even know there was a moon before the internet? Some places still don't have it. That weirds me out. I was checking into a hotel a couple of weeks ago, and I go, is there internet in my room? And the guy looks at me and he goes, no, but there is a phone in your room. There is a phone in my pants. And it has internet. All right, guys, that's my time. Thank you very much. My wife's in heat. Let me tell you something. There's nothing worse than being married when your wife's in heat. You know that voice, right? She's always like, Mr. Sprinkles, I'm in heat. Let's have sex. And I'm like, I don't want to fuck Garfield. You'll, <laughs> you'll have to excuse our studio audience while they go, did I just see what I thought I just saw? You're probably all thinking the same thing. All right, we are moving uh, hastily along, as wonderful as that cat in a suit was. Uh, going to bring on our next performer, a man I have uh, had the pleasure of uh, performing with on many an occasion. I think he's fantastic. I know you will too. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Kirshen! Thank you. Thank you, Rove. Thank you. Rove, my manners, ladies and gentlemen. It's Rove! Rove! Yeah! Oh, this is exciting. Jeez, I didn't... Like, if you told me as a kid growing up in 1980s London that one day I'd be not, I would be on YouTube.com, I wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> like, I'd be like, no way, no kid like me gets on YouTube.com. Maybe President Barack Obama gets on YouTube.com, but not a little Englishman like me. So thank you. Thank you, people here. Thank you, viewers at home, for taking time out of your lazy masturbation to flick over to my tab. So <laughs> what I'd be doing if I was watching this at home. I'd have both going at the same time. I... <laughs> one eye on me, one eye on the porn. Get mixed up in your head. Good things happen. Uh, <laughs> Some, somewhere an association's being made, and I appreciate that. <laughs> so this just happened to me the other day, and I, I still haven't processed it. Because I, I work nights. This is my job. So I finish work, and then I do normal things. So I do things like grocery shopping in the middle of the night. I'll do it at 2 in the morning when it's just me and drunks. <laughs> All right, and the occasional nurse. And the occasional drunk nurse. <laughs> 
Which is, oh, I love that. I love a drunk nurse. Not even for any creepy reasons. It's just like nurses have the best stories. And if they're drunk, they share. <laughs> like nurses have stories that would put a sea captain to shame. <laughs> stories with lines in it like, no, you have to understand. It was a full-sized umbrella. But I was just in this, like, I was just in this 24-hour store just buying normal groceries at 2 in the morning, like bread, milk, cereal. And I put my basket of food next to the register, and I went to get a couple more things. And I came back, and it's gone. Like, my basket's gone. So I'm looking for the overzealous employee who's putting everything back. (laughs) And then I see the most confused-looking drunk man leaving with my stuff. Like, he bought my things. (laughs) He bought my... Gr- I don't even know if that's a crime. I don't, if anyone at home knows, like, comment in. Like, I don't know what the legality... I think until you pay for something, it belongs to the store. And then he paid for it. So it's his. But I... I selected it. Like, I put all the work in. I got, I got like, a week's worth of food, and he just waltzed off with it. Like, I, I couldn't be mad at him either, because he was so drunk and so baffled. Because from his point of view, that's just, that's the world's most convenient, convenience store. (laughs) He's just staggered in, hammered, and the guy's like, what do you want? He's like, this. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, convenience store. I'll be back here every night. This is wonderful. I don't remember having a cat. (laughs) But... Either that, or he was so drunk he'd forgotten that he hadn't already gone to the effort of selecting everything. You know, have you ever done that thing where you're really drunk and your brain just starts to do useful things? Am I the only one who does that? Who's just hammering and thinking, well, I'm, I'm, I'm slaughtered, everything's fun, so I might as well get some chores done. <laughs> you know, you wake up the next morning and all the bathroom tiles are clean, <laughs> but you've vomited in the freezer. Yeah, it's a trade-off. <laughs> the entire apartment's vacuumed, but you've killed a man. <laughs> it's give and take. Now, Jay, Daniel going straight in with the Catholic stuff. At a time that we have a new pope as well, of all the times to be doing that. New, a new, the pope is barely out of... I don't know where popes come from. <laughs> he says that. First Latin American pope as well. First Pope from Latin America. I know. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? I mean, don't worry, you know, he's, he's still white and hates gays. So they, they kept it safe on that front. They kept the light-skinned homophobe theme that's working so well. It's an exciting time for gay rights. We had the debate in the UK. It got passed by Parliament. The Conservative Prime Minister voted for gay marriage, which is remarkable. That's never happened before. Not everyone was for it. One guy in the middle of the debate actually said the words, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. <laughs> like he said that out loud. Like knowing that other people were listening as well. Like knowing that his words were being recorded and everything. He thought that was a good thing to say. Like that's on a part with, like if it was a debate about whether women should have equal pay in the workplace and he just stood up and gone, girl smell and sat down again like that. <laughs> That's the same level of sophistication. He is my second favorite homophobe. I know it's weird to have them ranked, but I do. My number one is, and I think will always be, uh, Michelle Bachman. She has to be, because she's the only one I know who's that homophobic while being married to such an obviously gay man. Like... (laughs) Like, he's so gay. I know I'm libeling someone on a live streaming thing right now, but he's so, like, if he's not gay, he's putting a lot of effort into appearing gay. Like, he is really, have you seen? Like, go, like, you're on YouTube right now. Like, don't do it right. Open up another, like, tab next to my one and YouTube Marcus Backman interview. He is ridiculous. Like, I know not everyone who sounds like that is gay, not everyone who's gay sounds like that, but he's so, like, the two of them are absurd. In the modern era, and people are becoming so much more accepting, they exist. (laughs) Last year, I was in San Francisco during Pride Weekend, and I would urge any of you to go there, whatever your sexuality. I was there as a straight guy with my girlfriend, and it's one of the best celebrations on earth of humanity and sexuality. It's just a massive party where the only theme is tolerance. 
I'm walking through the middle of this park around which a lot of the events are centered with these two guys. And they were in great physical shape. <laughs> which we could clearly tell. Because all they were wearing was shoes <laughs> and matching cock rings. I hope intentionally, by the way. I hope that was planned between the two of them. I'd hate to think they rocked up independently. You're like, oh, you as well. <laughs> oh, well, there's no time to go home and change either. This is embarrassing. <laughs> but they were walking through the middle of the park together, and it was hilarious, and it was wonderful, and it was fantastic, and it was absurdly gay. <laughs> but still not as gay as Marcus Backman's voice. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening to my part this evening. Take care. Appreciate it. I'll be Matt Kirshen. Bye. Matt Kirshen. Thank you, Rob. Matt Kirshen. Yeah. Later, Matt and I uh, are going to go to Six Flags with an oversized coat. He's going to get on my shoulders. <laughs> X2, here we come. It's a roller coaster. For those of you uh, not in the Angelino way. And I don't know what that means. As I say Angelino way, it suddenly means like you're pregnant with a Californian. Could be a thing, you don't know, look it up. Uh, this is one of the things I have found having moved here to, uh, to the States from Australia, is you know adjusting a little bit. And for the most part, it's not too difficult. But one of the things I have kind of struggled with is tipping. Because we don't tip as readily as you do here in the States. You know, cafes and stuff, sure, we'll do it there. But I had an experience when I first arrived where I was in the men's room. And I don't know how it is for the women, but sometimes in the men's room, there's a guy, like an attendant there with, right, guys? Yes, he's got like cologne and little hand towels and like a bowl of mints. Because that's what you want when you've just been to the toilet. <laughs> Candy. How many times have you found yourself in the situation going, oh, I just took a dump. I could really go some M&Ms right now. <laughs> but he's there with the towels and everything. And I don't mean to brag, YouTube people, but I've been able to go to the toilet by myself since about the age of three. <laughs> and so I wasn't sure of what to do. So I did what I needed to do and then went past, washed my hands. The guy gave me a towel. I was like, thank you, Dry, uh, dried my hands then walked out, but didn't tip. Oh, yes. I learned a very valuable lesson that day. Because let me tell you something. There is no worse look than you leaving the men's room with another guy chasing you demanding payment. <laughs> Trap for young players. It is indeed a pleasure to welcome our next act, ladies and gentlemen. You have seen him on Conan. You have seen him on Jimmy Kimmel Live. You have seen him on Cougar Town. He's a MILF. The absolutely brilliant Rob Delaney. Thank you, sir. Would, Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Nice to see you all. Uh, in keeping with the international theme, I want to tell you a story. I uh, recently did a show in Belfast in Northern Ireland, and uh, it's calmed down in recent years. It's not as scary anymore, but the city's covered with murals back from when it was going through its troubles. And you can hire a cab and get a ride around and look at all the murals. Some of them are really beautiful. Some of them are sad, like hunger strikers and stuff. But they're, you know, it's just sort of how they healed and dealt with it. Anyway, I got a cab driver, and he was showing me all the murals. And as he was about to finish, he said, now I'm going to take you and I'm going to show you the most powerful mural we've got. It's, it's my favorite mural, but I need to tell you as an American, there's a symbol on this mural that you're not going to understand. So you'll look at it, sort of absorb it, let it wash over you, and then I'll explain the symbol to you. So I was excited to learn about a new symbol. He pulled around a corner and there was this like seven story tall painting of a British paramilitary soldier just firing tear gas canisters into a pile of kids. It was upset. Uh, but then in front of it was this ancient Irish symbol that he had mentioned. And what it was, it was a giant red circle with a slash through it. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, 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 okay. 
And I just decided to mess with him a little. I was like, okay, so what you're saying is you got, you take a thing and then you mural up a building and uh, then you put this symbol on it. And the symbol kind of means like you should do that some more. And he's like, no, for goodness sake, what I meant. No, the symbol, I, I know you wouldn't know what it is. You take a great red, ruby red circle and you then circle the entire building with it. And then you're from the northwest to the southeast, you bisect it with a mighty red slash. And what we're saying is none for me and mine. No, none of that. And I was like, okay, I get it. So basically, you know, you uh, draw something or whatever, you take a picture, and then you put this around there, and it's saying, yeah, a few more of those. And he's like, no, for goodness sake, let's jump and let's get the wax out of your American ears, for God's sake. And uh, anyway, now we, uh, now you guys know what that symbol is, too. So I just want to share that with you guys. It's my favorite thing that's happened to me in the last five years. Uh, since this is live on the internet, I want to talk about internet filth and porn. I grew up in the 80s, and when I wanted to masturbate, I had to, like, write a letter to a friend's older brother who lived in Pennsylvania, and he would mail me back, like, the coordinates of where he had buried, like, a cigar box, like, 11 years ago with a rain-damaged Playboy. I would have to take a map, and I'd have to, like, get a friend, and we'd have to bring, like, victuals and dry goods. And I'd like hike through the woods. We would get there just as the sun was setting and we'd dig it up and they, like there'd be no more daylight. So we'd have to like jerk off together just because that's all the time that was left, you know? And, and but now with the internet, it's just filth. You'd open your computer and you open your AOL homepage, just a gaping butthole. It's just total filth. Why is it so gross? I'm just so glad that I grew up in an age where like I, when I was younger, I would have to jerk off to poetry. I used to jerk off to the written word. You should try it. But now it's just garbage. And, and uh, people are fucking each other on their butts a lot online. And I don't understand that. I, uh, and I'm not speaking out of school here. I tried it. When I was in college, I had a girlfriend. And we were like, hey, I heard people butt fuck. And uh, like, it wasn't even me. I wasn't like, hey, it's my birthday. Can I? And like, it literally, it might have even been her idea. I don't remember. I didn't have a hankering for it. And so... <laughs> So we were gonna do it, right? So we're having normal penis vagina sex, and then she's like, yeah, go ahead, suck it out. And I just like started, and she was like, oh God, no. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. We don't have to, we'll never do it again, I'm very sorry. I want you to enjoy what we do. Let's go get a falafel. And, and she was like, Meh. and she goes, no, you need to, you need to know what, what it was like. And I was like, what a, it seems awful, I believe you. She was like, no, you need to know. And I was like, what does that mean? I like backed up against the wall. I thought Navy SEALs were gonna like burst out of the building and be like, time to learn. And so anyway, what she did is she went to her dresser and she got just a tiny little vibrator, a wee little itsy bitsy one, like not even a, you know, like a tiny one, like you'd use on the bus, like nothing. And so then we started messing around again, and then she took it and touched it to my surprisingly cute little butthole, and then she went push, and I immediately was like, <laughs> like, like throwing up almost, sobbing, racked with sobs. So anyway, I get it. I understand that there are people in the world who don't want a big, hard penis going in and out of their butthole, and I'm among them. I'm one of those people. So... I'm just saying, you're the boss of your own butthole, okay? Remember that. So if your boyfriend is like, it's Arbor Day, be like, mm, and so you don't have to let him do it. I mean, so I don't, I just, look, if you want me to fuck you in your butt, I'll fuck you in your butt. I'm not a monster, but I'm saying, I, you're the boss of your butt. You decide what goes in and out of there, so. Uh, another thing, another thing, another thing for you youngsters out there. Uh, that same older brother, the friend's older brother who I called and had to get the coordinates for the cigar box to dig up the porn, he also ta taught us what blowjobs were. Not like he didn't do a tutelage session, but he, <laughs> he, he mentioned that he got a blowjob, and we were like, what's that? He's like, it's one of the penis go And I was like, shut up, I want one. And so, anyway, and he, he, but he mentioned, he was like, yeah, but it, they got to swallow, they can't spit. And I was like, what does that matter? And he was like, Whoa. Anyway, decades later, I got a, I finally, a Samaritan, put my penis in her mouth. And I realized that if you suck my dick, you're a hero. You can take it, you can spit it in your hand, and you can break my jaw. And I will drive to the florist, and, get, and I'll get my jaw wired shut by you flowers come and be like, thank you so much, I love you. Spit or swallow, it's up to you, I don't care. I mean, literally, you could like, you could suck my dick, and then when you're done, you could peel off an expensive Mission Impossible style mask and reveal that you're not a beautiful young woman, you're Pat Sajak from the Wheel of Fortune. And I'd be like, Pat, let me take you to brunch. I'm Rob Delaney, thank you very much. Rob Delaney! 
the king of regular penis vagina sex. Um, another thing uh, I need to point out to you is when I, I first arrived here, you know, I, I think this is going very well tonight, by the way, don't you think? It's really cool to get asked to do something like this, especially because when I first arrived here uh, in Los Angeles, Hollywood itself, they said, if you want to make it in this town, you're going to have to sleep your way to the top. Uh, I did that. But the problem was no one told me it had to be with someone in the industry who can further your career. So I just ended up nailing some homeless guy in an alleyway. Uh, but to his credit, he said he would put some calls in. So, uh, although it was a banana he had in his hand at the time. Anyway, so anyway, the night is still young, fingers crossed. Ladies and gentlemen, our next performer, please welcome him now, one of the best, Mr. Jeremy Hutz. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, stop. Hi, how are you? This is my face. <coughs> Sorry. It's just, you can't all be good looking, you know, but I still have the odd sexual experience. This is my lucky shirt. Do you know what that means? I got laid while I was wearing this shirt. And she loved this shirt, because when we were doing it, she said, whatever you do, don't take off that shirt. <laughs> I like women. They're way better looking than us. They are, but everything in the world's designed to make them even more. We can't compete. You're a good-looking guy, but this is the best you're ever going to look. <laughs> look at her, man. Because women wear the makeup, and they're already pretty. You can't wear makeup. You ever see a woman without her makeup for the first time and just think, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> see, even the women have to give me that one. Because <laughs> they've all seen one of their friends and thought, Jane's looking a lot like Dave lately. This is ridiculous. <laughs> women cheat, man. Their underwear is way better than ours. It is. Are you a boob man or an ass man? You like both, you greedy bastard? <laughs> Leave some for somebody else. He likes both. <laughs> you ever been startled by boobs? You've been fooled, haven't you? Oh yeah, because you see giant boobs on a woman and then she takes off her bra and it's two little gingerbread men eyes staring at you. <laughs> you think, shit, I've been had. <laughs> it's true. Women have underwear that fixes stuff. Victoria's Secret should just be called lies. <laughs> Our underwear is garbage, isn't it? It comes with a fly for no apparent reason. Ladies, we don't use the fly. We pull it down and flip it over the top. And If we're at a urinal and the guy next to us is using his fly, we punch him in the fucking face. But it's not all gloom and doom. I'm just saying, ladies, if you got a guy that loves you, stay with him because he's trying, isn't he? Seriously. It's gross, man. We know it's tough to be a woman. It really is. You have the period. Good Lord. You just bleed. You don't fall down or nothing. It just happens. But we didn't invent it, so quit fucking yelling at us. And we have balls, they're not particularly attractive. Come on, ladies, you don't like balls. You don't, you're like, I'll deal with that long thing, but I don't want those bouncing all over my forehead. <laughs> These are nasty, aren't they? If, you, if it was reverse, ladies, and you had balls, you couldn't handle it. It'd be like carrying a purse that never matched your outfit. They're horrible. We have the unique ability, you know this ladies? We have the unique ability of being able to sit on our own ball. Do you know this? Your guy will never tell you that. You just see this look on his face at a restaurant. <laughs> what 
What happened? I don't want to talk about it. Tell me. I sat on my ball. Are you satisfied? Sat on your ball. That's ridiculous. How fucking uncoordinated are you? I'm just saying they're nasty, man. Oh, you got to find the right person that puts up with your bullshit, man. You can't live your whole life by yourself. You don't want to die alone. Get a dog like I did, man. Seriously, check it out. Here he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 17. I rescued him. I got him uh, out of someone's backyard. I just opened a fence, picked him up, and ran away like an asshole. I took him to Petco to be groomed. What a shit place that is. I said a trim, they shaved him almost totally bald. He comes waddling out, I don't even recognize him. But I took him because he seemed to know me. You know how embarrassing it is walking a bald dog in my neighborhood? Cats try and fuck him. I'm not a big cat guy, I don't like him. You never buy a cat, do you? They just show up on your stoop and you hear, eee! like, maybe I better let it in. Thus begins a 25 year commitment with the most standoffish bullshit animal on the face of the planet. You ever call your cat? Oh yeah, they're right on it. They get up and walk in the complete opposite direction lift their tail and show you their asshole. How rude is that? I feed you, you miserable animal. Don't flip me off with your hole, gee. Just get a dog, man, dogs are the best. He's 17 now, man, like I said. You never know, if you've got an old dog, you don't know. They go old like your grandpa. You know your grandpa's nuts, right? Okay, let me explain it. You ever see your grandpa just staring at the wall? Your mom comes downstairs and goes, leave grandpa alone. The TV used to be on that wall. <laughs> That's the way your dog is. He sleeps so soundly, man. I poke him and if he opens his eyes, I go, well, I guess we're going for a walk right now. Cause he's old, man. He's so old, but dogs are fantastic, man. You, listen, honestly speaking, are you guys dating? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you love her, right? Do you have a dog? No. You don't, man. Have you ever had a dog in your life? Yeah, yeah. Remember when you used to go outside and the dog would lie by the door until you fucking came home? <laughs> she has never done that. <laughs> and if she does get the hell out of that relationship, <laughs> you were great. Thank you so much. Great to be here, everybody. As you know, my name is Professor Boyfriend. Oh. Hey, what do you want? My own is a lonely fat chick. Oh, what are you guys on? You're not the ones who have to sit in a lap. Seriously, you're, you're all seeing that too, right? That's just me just going, wow, something just kicked in. Uh, I'm going to give a press conference now. Uh, I'm hoping like each performer as they come out now are getting more and more, uh, we've gone from microphones to stands, like some, the next person might have a podium and we just build like a, I don't know what, some huge, it'll be like Best Buy at the end of it, it's like, but with people in, in here. Oh, what, Best Buy, what have they done to anybody? Nothing, they've given us wonderful audio visual memories for years and then I just feel the need to kick them for no apparent reason. Hey, look at that thing, we're back. Ladies and gentlemen, our next performer, you may know him from the wonderful sketch group Dead Kevin. Any Dead Kevin fans in the house? Just, even just fans of people who hate a guy called Kevin and love that idea. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ahmed Barucha. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Give me go for Rove, everybody. He, uh, he took the mic stand back. It's BYO mic stand. Uh, it's good. This is crazy. YouTube is becoming like television now. The only difference is, you know, they still give the opportunity to the viewer at home to 
attach their hateful thoughts to the bottom of this video. <laughs> Parents, read your children's YouTube comments. <laughs> Recently, I went to a bar and I went to the bathroom. In the bathroom, they had two urinals. One of the urinals was filled with ice, which I thought was kind of weird. So I went to the other urinal. <laughs> But as I was going to the bathroom, I started looking at that ice. I was like, hmm. It would be really fun to melt that ice. So I stopped myself, went over to the other urinal. And I started melting the ice, and I thought I was alone. But a voice just comes from the stall, and he's like, couldn't resist the ice, could ya? It's like, who is that? <laughs> what kind of perverted science experiment did I just walk into? It's like, that's three for ice. <laughs> I feel like it's not cool to like things anymore, you know? Can't enjoy anything. I have to like everything ironically or hate it. Like, cool people, like hipsters, you know? Like, hipsters have become like the two old guys from the Muppets. <laughs> right? Like, at first glance, you're like, wow. These guys really hate the Muppets. But then on closer inspection, you're like, hey, these guys bought season tickets to the Muppets. <laughs> keep coming back. Why do we keep coming here? Because we're dead inside. <laughs> I basically grew up in your typical all-American household. My mother's an Irish Catholic woman. My father's a Pakistani Muslim. See you guys later. <laughs> you know, baseball, apple pie, glob jamin, things like that. <laughs> a lot of people ask me if my parents fought because of their religions, you know, different religions. They didn't fight because they loved each other. You know, like, it's crazy to fight over religion. Like, you can't prove who's right. Like, every religion has the same credentials, you know? It's like, how do you know your religion's right? Oh, it says it in this book. Oh, but it says it in my book. Yeah, but my book says your book's not true. <laughs> well, so is my book. <laughs> But my dad told me my book was true, but so did my dad. <laughs> like, it's just a guess, just a guess, but it's the only guess that people will murder each other over. Like, there's no one killing each other over how many jelly beans are in a jar, right? <laughs> uh, we say it's 67, we say it's 87, 52. It's all part of the same jelly bean. We think the jelly bean hates gay people. There is no jelly bean. There might be a jelly bean. I'm a jelly bean. Let's kill him. <laughs> We're all jelly beans. Let's kill ourselves. I think the jelly bean's a woman. That's ridiculous. Who said that? Yeah, shut the hell up. <laughs> I found out that there's people that don't believe in dinosaurs. And they think that the devil put dinosaur bones in the earth to trick us. <laughs> That is the lamest, nerdiest devil ever. <laughs> it's just some science fiction nerd devil. Like, like, hey, Lucifer, what's on the agenda for tonight? Murder, genocide, plague? Uh, no. <laughs> Actually, a much more diabolical scheme. I've created a prehistoric reptilian species. I'm going to take their bones and bury them deep down in the earth, as it suggests an alternate timeline than in the Bible. <laughs> and then we'll hope that one day, someone comes along, digs them up, and questions God's existence. <laughs> huh? <laughs> and if that doesn't work, we still have the gays. Hey, guys, been fantastic. Thank you very much. Another round of applause for Ahmed, everybody. I'm collecting the set. I'm collecting the set. Seriously, I, I, one day we will look back at this moment when there are no microphones left in the world. And I'll be sitting here laughing, going, they all said I was mad! 
Who is laughing now? Me with my booming voice! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a pleasure to welcome our next performer on the stage. Not only a very gifted stand-up comedian, but one of the stars of one of my favourite shows on television, Parks and Recreation. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Retta! <laughs> How's everybody doing? So I'm the black girl. It's okay, I'm used to it. I've been this way a long fucking time. Um, so I'm here to talk about race. That's cool, we're all a little racist. What I can't stand is when people are boldly racist. You know, I prefer old school racism where you talk shit about me behind my back or behind closed doors. Now, old school racism is not to be confused with old fashioned racism, <laughs> okay? These are two very different things. Old school racism is passive, while old fashioned racism, a lot more aggressive, a lot more in your face. It was all the rage in the 50s and 60s with its high powered fire hoses and its public hangings. Yeah, that's the kind of racism I don't prefer because quite frankly, I don't like to get my hair wet, okay? So I accept that we're all a little racist and I include myself in that. I still make generalizations about you people. For example, I still believe that white people can't really feel cold. Which is why you can wear shorts and flip flops in 40 degree weather. As a black woman who turns on her heat in September, I find this to be a bit peculiar. But as an old school racist, I keep that shit to myself. It's only during high stress situations that I find that my racism rears its ugly head. Like when I've been in line at the DMV for an hour and the blonde in front of me insists on flipping her hair forward and back, forward and back, until it brushes across my face and sticks to my lip gloss. <laughs> that is a situation where a white girl might find herself getting snatched by a black woman. <laughs> or at the airport, when the ticket agent announces that they will begin broiding first class and the executive platinum frequent flyer business traveler bumps and pushes past me because he assumes I'm flying ammo class with the rest of the plebes. <laughs> Excuse you, John J. McAllister III. I'm assigned to seat 2D, bitch. Recognize. <laughs> but my racism is most evident when I'm driving because I have an obscene and unrelenting case of road rage. I am what you might call a psycho bitch behind the wheel, <laughs> who's also a little racist. But I'm here to tell you that it is a new what fucking day, people. It is a new fucking day. Because I was in my car, headed towards a light, towards an intersection. Now, there's another young lady headed towards this. I'm traveling east to west. She's traveling north to south. Now, she too would like to move east to west. So my light is about to turn yellow. So all she has to do is wait 10 seconds for the right of way. But instead of waiting the 10 seconds for her rightful turn, she takes it upon herself to risk my life and property by gunning it and making the turn just as I enter the intersection. This little entitled bitch and I think at this point, we all know what I was really thinking. This little entitled white bitch cuts me off. So I immediately go to my angry black woman who has no patience for entitled white bitches, please, right? So now I'm about to gun it so I can pull up next to her and give her the bitch to know who the fuck you just cut off face, right? I am looking to intimidate the shit out of her when I notice that she's got an Obama hope sticker on her bumper. <laughs> and that's when I said, you know what? I'm gonna let this one go. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm gonna give you a pass on this one, Marcy, because it is a new what fucking day. <laughs> Just know that this type of shit did not fly during the Bush administration. <laughs> yeah, I'd have lit your ass up. Know this. 
Because normally I'd want to strangle this trick, but it was the Obama hope sticker that convinced me to Barack the choke and let that bitch go. That's my time. Thank you guys for being Thank you. Greta! Oh, she can take it. That's professional. That's professional. Let all any aspiring comics out there, either in the room or watching this at home right now, whenever you leave anywhere, take your microphone stand with you. What were you doing with a microphone stand there in the first place? You need to question your attitude. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our final performer for the evening. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Oh my God, one of my favorites, the host of one of my favorite podcasts, Walk in the Room. Ladies and gentlemen, Greg Barron. <laughs> Hello, 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 hello. Nice to see you. Wow, this is exciting, guys. Top line in the old YouTube show, shit at 50. Shit is awesome. Yeah, I'm 50 years old. Well, you look awesome. Yeah, I fucking ironed my neck. <laughs> look amazing, man. I've had a pretty good career. I've made some mistakes. I'm not going to lie to you. I had an audition for Saturday Night Live years ago. When I say audition, it didn't happen. I was standing outside 30 Rock doing do an imitation that I do. I do voices, I do characters. Yeah, I've hit that, but I do them. I do characters pretty good. It's Bill Cosby explaining the Holocaust. You know, <laughs> they put the Jews on the train. Like, it's not a great imitation, but Holocosby is an awesome T-shirt. <laughs> I'm gonna make that T-shirt later, if I feel like it, put that little Michael Jordan mustache on him. He's got the patent on that now. How are you guys? It's just really... I mean... Oh, let's go. I have... Uh, this is exciting. You know, I, I, I've had a pretty good life. I have a, a family. I've got a beautiful... Uh, uh, and, uh, two uh, um, daughters. Beautiful. One of them's nice. Uh, daughters. One of, the, one of them. Not, not, not nice. They're both nice. Just one of them likes me. The other one doesn't like me. The younger. The older one likes me. Eleven. She likes me. The older daughter likes me a lot. Like, she's all, like she thinks I'm the sun and moon. Like, she really... But she's not a genius either. Like, she's not a bright... She's not a bright person. It doesn't make her a bad person. She's just not a genius. As a parent, I wouldn't be a good guy if I pretended she was smarter than she's going to be the president of nothing. That doesn't make her not... She's lovely. She's a lovely person. Do you know what she wanted for her 11th birthday? You know what's at the top of her list? She wanted a hug. How about that? You want to know what her second favorite thing in the whole world is? Cartwheels. If she could cartwheel into a hug, she would turn into a rainbow. She's just not a genius, that's all. She's not a thinker, that's all. She's just not a person who puts things together. I'm not, let me give you an example, just so you don't think I'm being a dick. We're on an airplane. She has a 7-Up in a can. Flight attendant comes over and says, would you like to have a cup of ice with that? She says, yes, I would. Flight attendant puts down a cup of ice. My daughter looks at the cup, looks at the can, and takes a cube, and she's really pretty. Like, she's super, she's gorgeous. She's a very, very pretty, she's just not a thinker. Now, let me explain my younger one to you. She's more complex. She's seven. She has an imaginary friend that hates her. <laughs> Hang on. And she don't give a fuck. <laughs> How weird is that? She has a friend that she made up with her mind that doesn't like her. And she's like, go fuck yourself. Like, she already knows human beings are going to be disappointing. She was walking through the house the other day on an imaginary phone like this, not talking. I go, what are you doing? She goes, I'm on hold. Like, that's weird. And the other one is really, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not comparing them because they're both lovely. They're both beautiful. But the other one sort of fell out of my wife's vagina with big, like, brown hair and bee-stung lips and beautiful eyes. And the little one came out with it. You know, like, when babies have hair, barely any, like, you got to push all three together and put a bow in it so that everyone knows, oh, it's a chick. Like, it's not a chick, but you have to do that. And then she had no depth perception, so she had to have these glasses. And then all of her teeth came through one hole, like, at the, you know, at the front. So she has to have this thing called an expander where you have to tw you put it in your mouth. It's like an Iron Maiden for your mouth. And you put a key in there and turn it every at night so that her teeth spread. It's like, and then you give her, we've given her a lisp. Like, she didn't have a lisp, but we put plastic in her mouth. And now she talks. It just has to be like, she does them with And then when she's done talking, she has to go and suck it back in because her mouth is filled with spit. How about that? Seven. Maybe she's cynical. 
she's kind of a punk. Like I walked past a room the other day, she was talking to a friend, telling what I did for a living, and she goes, yeah, I think he's a clown. First off, <laughs> you're right. But they take care of each other. That's the kind of cool thing, because the older one is, she's just, she's excited by outside. Like she, when she's, oh my God, outdoors. Like she just, everything is exciting to her. And the younger one is cynical and, and they'll date at some point, which will be exciting, but weird at the same time. Because I live in a house with just, like there's just nothing but vagina at my house. Like it's all, I mean, not, I don't have it in boxes. What I'm saying is that <laughs> there's just a lot of women in my house. And I'll probably be psyched when they start dating, you know what I mean? Like, I'll probably freak the dude out that comes over because I'll be so excited there's a man in the house, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, he'll knock on the door with his fucking face and I'll be like, get in here, what do you want to do? Jerk off, watch a game, put a tap out shirt on? We can do that. <laughs> Hang on, my muffins are ready. And then I'll go to get muffins <laughs> and explain my apron to him. The point is... <laughs> and then the older one will... She'll date, she'll get her heart broken because she's open-hearted and... She'll give her heart to a dude and he'll fucking fuck it up. But then she'll have her little sister there to take care of her, to watch out for her. And I sort of like to imagine this scene like a John Hughes type movie where they're at high school together because they're only three years apart. True, that's my older daughter. She gets her heart broken and she runs off down the hall crying and then she goes to the bathroom and she's in tears. But then she notices her reflection in the mirror and she's delighted by reflections. And then my little one will just walk over to this dude that's standing by the locker and put out her cigarette. <laughs> and go, if you fuck with my sister again, <laughs> fuck with my sister again, I will kill you. My imaginary friends hate me. <laughs> my name's Greg Barron. Thank you all very much. Greg Barron! That's how you do it. It is, it is. So I'm thinking. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is our show. Did you enjoy yourselves? Yeah, you did. It was free. And for you at home, it was free too. Unless you pay yourself to go into your own house, in which case that makes no sense. Uh, coming up, it is Comedy Week, of course, on YouTube. Uh, this time tomorrow, there will be live improv. Thank you to the UCB people on this stage. So be sure to be part of that. Yes, nice. Good reaction. That's the one to have. Uh, a round of applause for yourselves. You guys have been a great crowd. Thank you to uh, YouTube. Thank you to Comedy Gives Back for organizing tonight. We are fighting malaria, people. One annoying mosquito is at a time. We are doing it. Thanks very much for having me. Thanks to all our comics. For you watching, I'm Rove McManus. Say hi to your mum for me. Good night, everybody. Thank you. This week on Comedy Week Live, it's a week full of laughs. Tuesday night, get ready for a show full of comedy based on your own YouTube videos with UCB Comedy. Wednesday, check out the hottest up-and-comers in the YouTube stand-up show. Thursday, College Humor goes from dusk till dawn with their all-nighter. And Friday night, we close it out big. First with Setlist Live, Stand Up Without a Net, and then the big music show featuring all your favorite musical comedy acts, including the godfather of them all, Weird Al Yankovic. All this week on Comedy Week Live.